The Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, developed by Bell Aerosystems in the early 1960s, was a critical tool for simulating moon landings during NASA's Apollo program. Built to train astronauts to fly in a low-gravity, airless environment, the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle was essentially a free-flying simulator designed to replicate the last 200 feet of lunar descent. First conceived in 1961, Bell received a $50,000 study contract in December of that year. This was followed by a $3.6 million production contract in February 1963. Two lunar landing research vehicles were constructed using aluminum alloy trusses and powered by a vertically mounted General Electric CF700 2V turbofan engine producing 4,200 pounds force, 19 kilonewtons of thrust. Mounted in a dual-axis gimbal, the engine compensated for five-sixths of the vehicle's weight to simulate lunar gravity. The remaining control came from two variable-thrust hydrogen peroxide descent rockets, 100 to 500 pounds force, and 16 attitude thrusters arranged in pairs for pitch, yaw, and roll. The first flight of Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 1 occurred on October 30, 1964, at Edwards Air Force Base, flown by test pilot Joe Walker. Over the next two years, Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 1 completed 198 flights, and Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 2 completed six, all without serious incident. Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 2 was assembled and tested at NASA's Flight Research Center to avoid cost overruns. Modifications to better simulate the Apollo Lunar Module included a three-axis hand controller and throttle and a foam cockpit enclosure to restrict visibility. On March 27, 1967, Neil Armstrong flew Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 1 at Ellington Air Force Base. On May 6, 1968, he was forced to eject from the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle at 200 feet due to fuel depletion and high winds. The Zero-Zero Ejection Seat, developed by Weber Aircraft, saved him. This led to the end of Lunar Landing Research Vehicle flights and the introduction of the improved Lunar Landing Training Vehicle. Three lunar landing training vehicles were built under a $5.9 million contract signed in March 1967. Lunar landing training vehicles retained the CF-700 engine and peroxide propulsion system, but improved stability, cockpit design, and flight dynamics. Lunar landing training vehicle 1 crashed on December 8, 1968, due to yaw control loss caused by a styrofoam cockpit enclosure. The problem was solved by removing the top of the enclosure. Lunar Landing Training Vehicle 2 was destroyed in 1971 during a test flight. The pilot safely ejected. Lunar Landing Training Vehicle 3 was last flown by Gene Cernan in November 1972 before Apollo 17. The Lunar Landing Research Vehicle and Lunar Landing Training Vehicle could fly up to 500 feet in altitude. Their control systems were analog, built with Burr-Brown transistor amplifier modules and designed with redundancy automatically switching to backup channels if faults were detected. During operation in lunar sim mode, the gimbaled jet engine stayed vertical relative to Earth's gravity, enabling the vehicle to mimic lunar hover and descent characteristics, even compensating for wind gusts within milliseconds. Test pilot Don Malik noted the shift in responsiveness in lunar sim mode, saying the vehicle moved from high response to low or weak response, requiring anticipation and finesse to fly. Deke Slayton, NASA's chief astronaut, famously stated that there was no way to simulate a moon landing except by flying the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle. Despite its crude, skeletal appearance and acknowledged risks, the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle was instrumental. Armstrong completed more than 30 lunar landing training vehicle flights, and all mission commanders credited their safe lunar landings to these machines. Apollo 16's John Young praised it immediately after touchdown, just like flying the Lunar Landing Training Vehicle. Piece of cake. Today, Lunar Landing Research Vehicle 2 is displayed at Edwards Air Force Base's Flight Test Museum. Lunar Landing Training Vehicle 3 hangs in the Johnson Space Center. The Lunar Landing Research Vehicle was not only a training platform, but also an experimental aircraft that contributed to early fly-by-wire development bridging the gap between Earth and the Moon with technical ingenuity and daring flight testing.